Hi there, thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to be talking about watercolour paints tonight. And uh, I produced a, a video a few weeks ago that was talking about paints, but I, I realised it was 27 minutes long, which is a bit long. So tonight I thought I'd just do an abbreviated version of what I felt you needed to know about paints uh, in, in about five minutes. So I'm going to be talking about watercolour paints. What I'm familiar with is uh, Windsor & Newton Artist Quality Watercolours. But we're also going to look tonight at um, Cotman Watercolours, which is the student quality watercolours for Windsor & Newton, uh, which come in 8 and 21 mil tubes. And we're going to be looking a bit at our hard palettes as well. So hard palettes come in uh, little travel kits like this, which has a, a, a water uh, bucket and, and it keeps water in here. Um, so this is Windsor & Newton Artist Quality Hard Pans and, and they come in metal containers and, and some of them are plastic. But essentially, if you're buying tubes, you've got to make a decision whether you buy uh, and it doesn't really matter whether it's Windsor or Newton or not, but you've got to make a decision whether you buy artist quality or student, and I would say to buy what you can afford, uh, because it's, it's quite phenomenal the, uh, the price difference. To, go, to buy cobalt blue in artist quality, which is a series four uh, watercolour paint, uh, is going to cost you about three times as much as the uh, Cotman student quality cobalt blue watercolour. Uh, so that's quite an amazing difference. So if you're starting out and you, you, you don't have a lot of spare money, then I would say by all means use Cotman Student Quality Watercolours. They're, they're pretty good and they've got a good uh, light fastness rating and permanence rating. So they're, they're still a really good uh, watercolour to use. So if you're buying artist quality watercolours, You've, you've got to realise that there's uh, different series. There's series one, two, three, and four. And if you're buying series four, which is unfortunately what cobalt blue is, it's one of my favourite colours, as is uh, cerulean blue, and that's series four as well, then you're going to be paying a lot more for a series four than a series one. Whereas the student quality paints come, don't have a series, so you pay the same amount for any of the colours. So it, it makes that's why this is three times cheaper than the, uh, the artist quality watercolour. So if you're starting out, what I'd suggest that you do is you buy um, Cotman student quality watercolours. Uh, you can get either these 8mm tubes or 21mm tubes. The links will be in the description below. And I'd also suggest that if you're going to buy um, any brushes that you buy, uh, potentially a, a synthetic sable instead of uh, a pure Kalinsky sable brush as these cost a couple of hundred dollars so you don't need to start with with that uh, that's what I would suggest although I have had this brush now for over 20 years so if you do make an investment in brushes then uh, it's, it's going to be a worthwhile thing they last if you look after them they last f forever so the, the, the pros of the pros of hard palettes is that they're they're easy to store they're very quick to set up and um, and to get going. If you were going to get going with these, all you would do is uh, all you would do to get going with these is just give them a bit of a spray over the top, uh, let that sit for a while, and then and then paint away. I'll just make that so you can see a bit more. So uh, the hard palettes are very easy to use because of that reason. Whereas tubes, you have to mix them up. Well, the way I use them, you mix them up in a wash. So that would be in a, in a bowl of wash. So if you can see that, that's uh, light red. And um, I would squeeze out of the tube into there, and then I would add a small amount of water, and then I would mix that up with a mixing brush, like a hog's hair uh, brush that would cost very little. So I would, I would end up using a brush like this to just mix it up. So if you're using uh, tubes, then you'll have to use some bowls. And uh, I use some very large bowls, but you wouldn't need to do this. This is You only use these if you're mixing up large amounts of wash. So the, the, the hard palettes really, um, if you're doing detailed work uh, and you don't want to make too much of a mess, you don't have a lot of space, then the hard palettes are a good way to go. 
Uh, if you're wanting to paint larger scale and you want to paint very quickly and freely, intuitively, uh, grabbing colours here and there and work in a state of flow, then I would suggest working out of bowls of wash is a good way to go, especially large scale. Um, and the only way you can really work, work large scale with hard pans is in small bits of the page at a time because it's very difficult to mix up a large amount of wash using these hard palettes. So if you're doing larger scale paintings then definitely the tubes is the way to go. So and that's, the, that's generally what I paint. Uh, I paint on quite a large scale, uh, A3, A even full sheets of uh, Reeves BFK etching paper I use. So I, I paint on quite, quite a large scale and so that's why I use these. So th there'll be lots more lessons for you to have a look at but I just thought I'd cover uh, paints quickly in a way that was hopefully helpful and in less time. So thanks for listening to this. If you found this helpful then by all means uh, press the, the thumbs up and if you want to know about when I put on future videos then subscribe to this. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, many lessons, weekly lessons, on how to paint uh, mostly using bowls of wash. Uh, initially we're just going to be using cobalt blue, light red and yellow ochre, those three colours, and we're going to be painting landscape in the, the, the genre or subject of landscape, uh, and using that as a vehicle to learn about the medium of watercolour, because it's really important to learn about how this medium behaves on a page, and once you understand it, then you really can be set free. But it's good at the beginning to really gain an understanding of that. So that's what we'll be doing over the next uh, probably 10 lessons. And then we'll branch out into um, larger formats and other subjects and things like that. So thanks for joining me tonight and I hope this was useful. And I look forward to seeing you again on another, another lesson. So thank you. Bye.